Game design isn't my passion, but as of late I've been noticing more and more how life bleeds into the games I play. Let's start the grocery store for instance. You walk in and you're usually thrown into the produce and market sections because the most perishable items need to be sold first. What follows after are the shelf stable products. Your canned goods, beans, rice, cereal, etc. Your last stop is almost always going to be the frozen section because you want to get those and get out as soon as possible before your ice cream turns into a mushy mess. After you grab your frozen pizza for the third time this week, you're at checkout. You made it. If you can, you're going to want to avoid the first and last lanes because those will always be the most busy. You want to go for the middle. Your cashier will thank you. Once you're out of the store, you can head home and lug all those cans of ravioli you purchased back to your apartment. Congratulations, you've gone through the real-life equivalent of a dungeon in an RPG. Each store's layout is a little different. Kroger and Safeway are going to be your classic Final Fantasy dungeons. Target is going to be Shin Megami Tensei because you get to meet God. And Aldi, with its constantly changing inventory, its streamlined approach to design, and its punishingly fast cashiers, is Dungeon Encounters. Dungeon Encounters was announced on October 1st, 2021, and launched on PlayStation, Switch, and PC in less than two weeks' time. Just like the game itself, Dungeon Encounters didn't give you too much time to think. Half a month later and you either bought the game at launch or you didn't. Dungeon Encounters is a luxurious steak dinner of a game, and for just $30 you're in for a good time for years to come. Let's talk about the people who made it. Each member of this game's staff is like a bullet slowly loading into a snub-nosed revolver. Hiroyuki Ito alone is a name that would make the hair on my neck stand up. He's the creator of the Active Time Battle System. He also directed Final Fantasy VI, IX, and XII, with XII being the most out there in terms of gameplay and scope. Avid fans of JRPGs are going to see the names of the people at the helm and say to themselves, Ito? Uematsu? Kato? I know those guys. I'll have to check this out. That's marketing for you. Use your talent. I probably wouldn't have even purchased this game if it wasn't for the fact that it was published by Square, and that I had such a great group of people attached to it. Sad to say, but those same people are the reason why I got past R&D in the first place. It doesn't feel like a real modern game sometimes, it feels genuine. It reminds me of a cult PSP game that people talked about on Insert Credit back in 2006. It's a labor of love. It's Valhalla Nights for the modern age. Before you even start the game up for the first time, you should be aware that Dungeon Encounters is all about speed and critical thinking, the former being apparent from the second you click on the game's icon. On my 2017 Nintendo Switch running the game on an SD card, you can wake the system, click on an icon, and be in the game within 15 seconds. Some applications on my phone don't even load that fast. This game is optimized with speed in mind, and with a bevy of movement and battle options, you can have an experience that's catered with your comfort in mind. I like playing the game with movement at 4x speed and with the character snapping to each corner of the grid. The speed made it a bit nauseous at first, so I changed the color of the grid to something a tad darker and it made the game easier on my eyes. My only real complaint is that, like most modern games, the text is too small for me to enjoy on a television. Playing on a monitor is possible, but this game was definitely designed with a Switch in mind. I'd even say that the Switch Lite's exclusively portable design makes for an even better experience. If Gunpei Yokoi created the Game & Watch after seeing a businessman on a train fiddle with a calculator, then Dungeon Encounters on Switch with its speed and tactfulness is like Businessman on a Train with a Calculator, Definitive Edition. It's Japanese role-playing game eSports. It's like chugging an 8-ounce can of Red Bull right before a cram session. Now my sweet little battle system otaku, you've purchased and installed Dungeon Encounters and you start the game up. Once you begin the game for the first time, you're met with a short paragraph with some story bits, and before you know it, you're already setting up your party. You don't create characters in this game, but you're given a small group of warriors to choose from. As you make your way through the list, you'll notice that some of these people are either already walking around in the dungeon, dead, or turned to stone. It's kind of refreshing to not only know the end goal of the game ahead of time, but to also know that the game starts with several characters already living their lives and dying in the process. As with most JRPGs, dying is but a minor inconvenience, so what you'll have to do is make a party of living characters, find these corpses, and bring them back to life. You won't see these people on the map itself, but their whereabouts are signified by coordinates on a grid. You'll have to write down these locations or remember them as you go along. I've never been one to take physical notes on games, but Dungeon Encounters made me a believer in that regard. 
except instead of a pen and paper, I'm taking notes on my phone and taking screenshots on my Switch. While some of the best characters in the game are locked behind petrification, death, or straight up being lost in the titular dungeon, you can look at each character's backstory whether they're with you or not. My favorite character is Macaulay, whose story is that he isn't a warrior, but just some guy who put on a VR headset and got sucked into the very real, dangerous world of dungeon encounters. He got isekai'd and he's kind of just rolling with it. Or at least that's what he was doing because, well, he's dead. What's strange is that despite his untimely demise, he's still labeled as wandering. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Maybe he's being wheeled around in a basket or something. You've got all manners of JRPG protagonists in dungeon encounters. Wizards, moms, a giant cat person, a giant cat, a Kaylee, you name it. Once you've read up on these characters though, the game's story doesn't progress until it's already over. This was never going to be a riveting tale of loss and love, it was always just going to be about the gameplay. In my written review of Dungeon Encounters, I made a somewhat extensive tutorial on the game's mechanics, but having played through the game again to capture footage, I've opted out of adapting said tutorial for this video. The reason? The game's tutorial is simply better. That being said, it would be a disservice to skip it. It's all packed together nicely in the menu, and you get prompts when you first discover a core of the game's general loop. Reading the tutorial in lieu of hearing me wax poetic over the ATB is nothing short of a courtesy for you. If you truly want that, my best advice is, well, check out the blog. Now when I purchased Dungeon Encounters, I had already seen most of what Square had shown in the two weeks between the game's announcement and release. I was sold from the first trailer. I knew I was in for a good time. I played during a weekend and found myself hooked. In those two days, I played nearly eight hours off and on during breaks at work and in bed. I almost never play games at work, so you know I was feeling some kind of way. After I hit the 9 hour mark, I decided to stop and take a break. I played something else. I watched TV. I enjoyed my time not playing the game, and would eventually think to myself, eh, I should play some dungeon encounters. So I did. When I started the game up after my short sabbatical, I noticed that in the time between sessions, I still had my muscle memory. Most of the time when I play something, muscle memory only sets in after about 20 or so hours, or when I've been playing the game for a long enough time. For instance, in Resident Evil 5, I have the memory of aim, shoot, reload, turn, repeat, locked into the part of my brain that was supposed to hold telephone numbers. Dungeon Encounters is a special case because a game with such a simple, unique style of playing hit me harder than nearly any other game. It's almost like Tetris. It's all gameplay all the time. No story beats, no drama, no QTEs, no one getting stabbed halfway through the game. Less is more is the mantra for Dungeon Encounters. With its simplistic UI, no frills soundtrack, and its Spartan ability to set tropes aside and just be a video game. 